All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are here, we're live, we're full, in, we're full in effect with one of the best producers, in my personal opinion. We got the one and only Fresh Gordon on the line. How are you doing this evening? I'm all right. Yourself, how's everybody doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. First and foremost, right before we jump into this here, Fresh, I got to say, man, thank you so much for everything you did for hip-hop, man. You helped put so many amazing, legendary individuals into the music industry, man. So thank you for everything you did. No problem, man. Thanks a lot. But I want to take you back to the beginning there, Fresh. Like, what made you decide to get into the music industry initially? Okay, I, I used to play in church. I used to play guitar and stuff like that. So I was always into music and stuff like that. But the first time was when I saw a Flash playing the beatbox. That was one of my first inspirations. That was like something really different. Because everybody else was DJing and playing records. Now, this dude's got a little drum machine he's playing, so I'm like, okay, I like that. Then after that, you had Mastodon in the Deaf Committee. This is all about 78, 79, these dudes was doing that. And then later on, when the sampling first came out, when I heard AEIOU and the Art of Noise and those guys with the sampling, that's what really got me into it. Because you know this Gordy Groove is basically a sample record. I actually did not know that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, I actually I played the, the the part with the Andy Griffith part. I played that, but the Barber, Barber, oh yeah, those were samples from uh, Starsky Live at the Fever, and the oh yeah came from a sample I found in the recording studio I was working at at the time. And the crazy thing is, you don't really hear those kind of samples anymore nowadays. Majority of the time now, it's you. Majority of the time now, like nowadays, all it is is like auto tune and stuff like that. You don't really hear actual samples or drum machines anymore. Because uh, people are cheap. They don't want to pay uh, the used people stuff. They'd rather make something original so they can keep all the money. But sometimes, I mean, that's good on a creative point, but a lot of times the samples, I mean, samples are like that. Because if you find that unique sample, that just puts the record over the top. Almost oh, definitely. And also the, those those samples as well that you use, it also, say if older fans of the music, say if you use like an old country yeah. record or something, you yeah. know, it could bring in that genre of music as well. So if people got to look at it like that, you could be getting double the fans. Oh, of course. I mean, even if you look at even a big artist like Beyonce, in my opinion, my favorite song was Crazy in Love, where they sampled the Shy Lights. That sample with them horns, that just took it over the top. It didn't have that real hard electronic sound. It had some feeling to it. And also, speaking of feeling, man, I, I, one of my one of my favorite old school groups that you were actually a part of was the Choice MCs. I want to know, man, what's the story behind that amazing group? And of course, how did you meet the rest of the members like i want to know this. what's the story behind the formation of that entire group uh they were like one of the top well they're, they're dj dj lance now they had the choice of c's and they were they were just like a, a dj crew just like you know a flash and it was a dj crew they were a major dj crew in brooklyn so once i learned the drum machine word got to them that you know this guy knows how to program stuff he's got his own drum machine that's when i first had my 808 I had an 808 and a pro one synthesizer and they came by the house we put some stuff together and then we came together and then we got the first we had a uh, deal with rocky wreckage and that didn't go too good but then we got the tommy boy deal that that happened because i used to be a bike messenger and i used to carry demos around with me while i delivered packages so tommy boy records was in the city on 90th street so i went and dropped off a tape there i mean you can't do this no more just ring the bell walk up and go hey i got a song i want to play i didn't even know what the a was i thought i got a song i want to play for somebody they said oh yeah go go see joey Gardner. he'll listen to it i played it they heard the andy griffith thing and that was it so that's how the choice of season the whole tommy boy thing started and that's pretty cool though like nowadays there's like rooms like you can't even you can't even get past the desk but back in those days yeah. it must have been so small you just walk up and be like hey who do i see to play my record you know yeah, I didn't even know what A I know what A was. I said, who do you play this for? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? You got it played, and they most definitely dug it. But the one thing I want to know, they're fresh. Like, well, well, where where's the rest of the group today? Like, you know, like wh where are they now? Ah, uh, I can send you pictures. There's just pictures of us on Facebook. Uh, Jeffrey D and Keith B. Actually, all still around. I just did run into Stevie D. And Grant. I haven't ran into them too, but I, I just saw Jeff yesterday. We still cool. I gotta ask you: Do you think down the line you guys might get might get together after the COVID nineteen pandemic for like a choice MCs like you know kind of reunion? I don't know. I'm down. I mean, somebody could like manage it, put it together, and you know get us. Because I'm hearing that uh, the, like other countries love the old school. Like you see how the love I'm getting here from Canada. They talk about Japan and overseas. That's where they're looking for all the old school people at. Almost oh, I would definitely. definitely be open to it. A lot of the individuals I've interviewed, they're fresh. Like 
they were telling me when they go over to Japan, like, it, like they treat them like yeah. gods, man. They get they yeah. get bowed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's there's uh, definitely no real hip hop over there. I'll tell you that for a fact. <laughs> I wish I'd have kept that uh that classic that sample. I didn't that that when I sampled back then, I did that on an Apple IIe computer. I had a little sample card. It only gave you five seconds of sampling. That's why I like that sample was Baba and Oh Yeah. That's how I made the whole record with it. Because back then, the emulator and I think the, um, not the Sinclair, yeah, the one before that was like $30,000. The Fairlight CMI. That's what uh, Trevor Horn and the Art of Noise used to use out in London. I said, oh, man, I can't get no $30,000 keyboard. And then I found out, I was looking around online in the back of an electronics magazine. They said, a little sampling card you can put in your computer. I bought it, and that's what I used. And also, Color screen, straight green screen. <laughs> and also, Fresh, in 1986, you actually released the track, which was actually a fa, an answer to Run DMC's My Adidas titled My Felia. Oh, My Fila. Yeah, I have to yeah, ask that you. Was, that was just a fun record. We came up with the idea. Actually, me and John Lil from Houdini. Actually, he helped me with both of the songs, Fresh Commandments and My Fila. Because, you know, I ain't no, I'm not no real rapper. So, but Tommy Boy's pressing me, you gotta make another song, you gotta make another song. I said, all right, so I just, we just do those two together and see what happens. Did, did Run, did run really DMC music. ever I'm come not, up I'm not you? really a rapper, I don't rap like that. Did Run ever, did Run DMC ever come up to you and be like, hey, you know, we, we heard your track? Oh, yeah, I know them. Well, I know, I know, well, DMC, I know D real good. Because D used to always come over with Marky D from the Fat Boys. That's another guy that we, we ran every day together. His mom knew my mom, and yeah. I know a lot of people were just hung out with him. I was tight with salt and salt and pepper and all of them. So a lot of us got like that because we were on tour together. We was on the, the Fat Boys Wipeout Tour. So we toured for like two months straight with them, and, you know, we built relationships like that. And the one thing, that was actually my next question on my list. Like, what was it like actually touring with the Fat Boys, man? Because I, like, I heard they were like hella cool to hang out with back in the day. They're cool, and they love pranks. They love to play pranks. When you get to that hotel, oh, they're going to pull some pranks. The fat boy, if something happened to you, or something's missing, or your, your room is trash, trust me, one of the fat boys did it. But they straight dudes. They're real cool, but they love to act up. They act just like they did in the movie. Same thing. <laughs> what was one of the worst like pranks that you go. actually saw the fat boys do? Oh, man, they did it to me. They, um... I was asleep. It was one night. You know, everybody hangs out for the after party. I didn't feel like going to the after party or nothing. So I guess they 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 wanted me to hang out. Wouldn't hang out. So I go to sleep in my room. I'm good to sleep about two in the morning. I hear banging on the door. I'm like, what the hell is this banging on the door? So I go open the door. They took the garbage can from in the hallway. They put filled it up with old food. They all peed in it and leaned it up against the door. So when I came to open the door, all the the pee and all the food fell on my feet. I said, okay, I know who did this. I'll get them back though. Yeah, that's the worst thing they did to me. Oh, I, I gotta say, that right there reminds me of, like, a 1980s version of Jackass. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what they would do to Steve yeah, and man. stuff like that. that to... <laughs> but I got them, oh, don't trust me, I got them back, because I think the next night, uh, Buffy, the big one, the human beatbox, him and Mark were in rooms across from each other. So I took the bed sheet and tied it around the door, and I was in both of the rooms, and neither one of them could get out. <laughs> They stayed in that room for a good while, too. <laughs> hey, man, it most definitely sounded like good times, though, like, ex except for the, yeah, the urination sure. part. But other than that, it sounded like a hell of a time. Yeah. And when you, and also, Fresh, when you brought up uh, Salt and Pepper not too long ago, yeah, I want to let individuals know that you actually were, you actually are responsible for Salt and Pepper's biggest hit, Push It, which yeah. was actually recorded at your studio. I want to yeah, ask that was you. Recorded here. That's a, uh, we recorded that on 12 track, a Kai 12 track. And if you want me asking there with, 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 about that, like, what was it like actually working with Salt and Pepper, and how does it feel to know that you are responsible for one of the biggest tracks of all time? Oh, it's cool. I, I definitely like it. But it kills me that, um, actually, I was drunk when I made the song because I couldn't come up with nothing that night. Because, uh, actually, Herb, me and Herbie, you say me and Herbie produced it together. Because when Herbie came, all he had was the sample and the beat inside his SP-12. So I hook up his SP-12, and he's got this push it. That's all he had in there. I was like, what are you trying to do? Because I'm used to the boom bap, the slow, funky stuff. So I was like, I don't, he said, I need you to play something on top of this. I said, man, I don't know what I'm going to play on this. Because I, I can't do this. He said, come on, man, I need to come up with something. So I go around the corner. I get me a pint of Bacardi Lime. So I'm drinking that. Now, what I did was a lot of people don't know, like I say, this is creative stealing. I don't know if you ever heard this song called Let It Whip by the Jazz Band. 
Oh, I've heard of them, yeah. So let it whistle with the baby. So that song, you got the bass line. Doom, sh- sh- doom, sh- doom, doom. So I'm playing Let It Whip over the top of Herbie's beat. So then I came up with the dun, 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 dun. but the bass line is from Let It Whip, and then I put that melody on top of that. So, okay, that, like, that's how you put that The together. original is not completely original. It's really, the, the backbone of it is Dad's band. That's what I got it for. And I have to say, that song is absolutely phenomenal. Like, I actually have that salt and pepper record, man. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, th- there's times I put that on and you just sit back and you just want to go push it. You know, you just you just want to straight up, like, sing along to it, man. So, I got to say, man, you are a genius. In my personal opinion, that's one of the most catchiest songs ever. Thank you. Thank you. And let me give you another did you know about Push It. Originally, the song was going, they sung it. Boy, you really got me going. You got me so. But. See, I didn't have a vocal booth back then. You know, we can't afford no vocal booth. So what I did was I took a bunch of down comforters and put it all in the bathroom so they wouldn't get no echo. And I put the mic on top of the toilet. So now there's no vent in there. It's hot in there. So when they went in there and started, they tried to sing it, and Herbie kept saying, no, you got to get it right. By the time they sweated it out, they was go- you heard it just like you hear it now. Boy, you really got me going. They was like, we can't breathe in here. We can't sing that. You know, we can't sing that. I said, all right, leave it like that. We'll be all right. <laughs> but yeah, we, we did vocals in the bathroom. That's actually pretty cool, though. You don't even hate for for vocals like vocals in the bathroom, man. That turned out to be most definitely yeah. one of the most one of the most famous songs ever. Right? Uh, yeah, because I'm in a brownstone, the, the walls are high, so it may sound like the room is dry, but it's nowhere near dry. Once you record, you can hear the actual room ambience, and it's not cool. You want to have a nice, you know, flat, dry vocal when you're recording. And also, you were actually featured on Mary J. Blige's song, Sweet Thing. I have to ask you, how did you actually get connected with Mary J. Blige? To Corey Rooney. Uh, actually, okay, the connection is, uh, Marky D had a friend named Corey Rooney. He was a keyboard player from church, but he doesn't know, he knows how to play the keyboards real good, but he doesn't know how to program. I'm the programmer. So, they wanted Mary J. Blige's Sweet Things to have, like, some kind of dirty drums under there. So, I put the, um... I sampled, uh, what's that, Barry White, uh, I'm Just Gonna Love You a Little More Baby. So I sampled that and got that to go to, you know, mix in with the song and get the loops going. Because Corey didn't know how to loop. So me, Corey, and uh, Frank, the guitar player Frank, we all, you know, put that song together. That's actually really cool, because Mary J. Blige is a phenomenal singer, man. She, she literally yeah. has the voice of an angel. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think after all these years, she's still do she's still doing her thing as well, which is good. I saw her in the news not too long ago. She has some new music coming okay. up, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's an artist world right now. You don't really hear nobody talk about them because you don't really need producers no more. You even like that guy uh, Lil Nas X. He went and bought a, a, a beat for thirty dollars off the web and made a hit record. So I mean, nobody's really crying about a producer no more. And it's also, even with the COVID stuff going on, everybody's all sitting at home. They have computers oh, and everything. Yeah, so they, yeah. With today's technology, you can do you can pretty much do everything at home yourself, which it does put a lot of the yeah. other industry people kind of like, wow, well, what do I do now? Yeah, but then if you really, if you're a sound enthusiast and you listen to the music now, it's not recorded professionally. See, what we had back in the days, I call it quality control, where you sent your song, up to the record company. Then the record company will listen to it and say, oh, wait a minute, this mix ain't good. You gotta, you gotta do this over. It's gotta sound right. But now, I can sit here with my phone right here and I throw a beat together and just send it straight out to the world. And some people don't, can't tell and they record like the bass is too hard. They record the 808 just completely out of whack. The thing is, it's going brum, 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 but it's all over the place. But nobody's gonna stop that. So, the music suffers after a while because there's no quality control no more. And I'm going to be honest, and that that is why personally myself, I, I, I own my radio station that's 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, because I don't like this new age music. I like just yeah. what you said, quality. So, you know what I mean? I'm that kind of person where I still listen to the old stuff rather than the new stuff. I, I can't stand the new stuff. Yeah, because you can hear the difference in the compressors, the way the kick drums are compressed and everything. Oh, you, know, you hear the difference all day. Well, I most definitely agree. Like, the stuff on the radio, you know what I mean? They play, It's a big pile of garbage nowadays, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it pretty much all sounds the same to me. But once you got that auto tune, you can't tell the difference between Drake or somebody else going da 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 da. You can't tell. You can't, you can't tell the difference between nobody. And also, one of my favorite records, man. When we go back, when we're talking about real quality music, man. One of my favorite records that you actually did was the fre- was the Fresh Commandments. I have to ask you, 
What was the story and inspiration behind that amazing record? Because that's the one question I've actually been waiting to ask you. Ah, Jalo from Houdini. That was his idea. We just put it together. That's, a, that's another 12-track song. But that one, to me, doesn't sound as good as, like, Push It and some of the other stuff because normally what I would do, I was track inside of my house. And then we'll take the board or the tapes and go to a bigger studio so we can go through the big board and use the good compressors. But Fresh Commandments, I did everything myself. I mixed it in the house, everything. I mean, it came out pretty good. I mean, for a 12-track recorder, mastered down to a little half-inch tape. So it, it did all right. And I'm going to be honest, I've seen some old pictures you have on your Facebook as well, man. You had some amazing equipment, especially for, some amazing equipment in your house, especially for those times. I saw, like, um, a big pile of, like, uh, computers and whatnot, man. Like, you most definitely had, yeah. had, had the setup then. I can just imagine what your setup looks like now. Yeah. Actually, no, I don't even have a set right now. I just got the iMac and, I, and some monitors. Because I don't, I don't even mess with the music like that no more. I, got, I still got my keyboards on and stuff right there. But that set right there is a set that Jay-Z started on when we did the, the Jay-Z demo. Oh, damn. That was the 16 track with um, yeah, me, Jazz, me, Jazz, Jay-Z, and Big Daddy Kane. I actually did not know that you work with Jay Z. Damn, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning stuff on this interview as I go along. There, ah, if you don't mind me asking, man, what was it like working with Jay Z? If you go back on the web, or if you look at, he tells a story. If you get Jay Z's decoded book and look on page 16, he talks about the whole story. How Big Daddy Kane came in. Um, he came by my house, and we were all just actually Jazz and Jay Z with the house already. Because Jazz, uh, matter of fact, Jazz is the guy that's on my feet line with me. He goes by Jazz O now. So Jazz taught Jay-Z how to rhyme. But they always went my house all day, every day. But that's when I started selling cell phones. So I'm running the street most of the time. I would leave them here and let them play with the music. Then one day Big Daddy Kane came by. And uh, I was talking to him. I said, hey, Kane, man, I got this dude Jazz. Man, he's real nice. You know, check it out. So they come by. We sitting there talking and everything. So I just started playing a beat. Uh, the Cool in the Gang, James uh, NT beat. So um, I'm doing the beat. So they say, yo, turn the mic on. So this is a, it's a one-time shot. And there's no tracking or nothing. So I, I hear Jazz starting to rhyme. So I said, let me see what's going to happen here. So I hit the, hit the record on the DAT machine. And then Jazz goes first. And then um, Jay-Z goes on. Then Big Daddy Kane goes. It's just a basically freestyle. They're passing the mic back in front. And from that tape, that's where the buzz from Jay-Z started. And his whole, whole, whole career took off from there. You know what I mean? How old was Jay Z when that demo was actually recorded? Seventeen. Oh damn! Just straight young. Yeah. yeah. When you first oh, heard him rap on that microphone, though. Him. So it's when you first heard him rap on that microphone, though, did you did you did you like see how big he was going to be? Where you did you sit oh, back yeah. and go, damn man? I, he just said some unique stuff. I said I ain't never heard. Um, he used words like lousy lush. He said I damn sure dust you lousy lush you. I said yo, who calls somebody a lush? I said the I like the words this dude used. So in 1990, you actually did some production work for Father MC's first album, Father's Day. I have to ask you, what was it like working with Father MC and on, and on his Father's Day record? Oh, yeah. He was a chip, too. He's a funny dude. He's, he was cool. I never really met no bad people. I just get lucky like that. But usually, off the rip, if I get a bad vibe from, some, from somebody, I just, I just remove myself. I don't sit there and wait to experience negativity, so I don't do that. So as long as everybody got a cool vibe, we get it going. MC man like I, I had him on the radio station as well he is a phenomenal individual you know very very talented yeah. guy I think he has a new record coming out called uh, Black Disney as well I don't know if you saw but a lot of people are uh, posting a fake video saying he's in a homeless shelter or something like that and I don't know I don't do too much on, online that's why usually you don't see too many posts up there for me I use Facebook just to meet people hey how you doing I, I don't stay on it all day long posting pictures and videos and all that stuff I don't you get sucked into it next thing you're doing your whole day. If you're making a living doing it, that's fine. But to sit there playing around all day? Nah, we can't do that. 
I, I used to do that when I when I was like when I was younger, man. Now I just post the promos yeah, for the radio oh, and I get, yeah. I get the heck off, man. <laughs> I, I used to live them. online when it was you were unique and everybody couldn't do it back about ninety eight when everybody was on AOL when AOL first started. Everybody couldn't get online back then. Everybody didn't know how to do it. Yeah, yeah, I, had, I think you had to wait like twenty minutes sometimes just to open a web page, something like that. It was, uh, <laughs> you'd be like, "All right, I'm gonna go make a sandwich, yeah. have a shower, take a poop, come back, and it's not even halfway done yet." Shit, it took you a minute to log on. You had to wait for all that to go through. Yeah, it took a minute. Oh yeah, most definitely. You can't get any phone calls either because it took up your phone line. Oh no, no, yeah, you got to turn off your call waiting. <laughs> Oh, the good old days, you know what I mean? They, we got to admit, though, yeah. some people miss those days, man. Th those were the days, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. If if kids had dial-up nowadays, they're fresh. I don't think they'd be online as much as they are. They'd be like, screw this, I'm going outside to play. Oh, man, they, was, they wouldn't be able to survive. Imagine if they had to remember a phone number. <laughs> oh, man, I still, I still remember my old phone number, man, when I was a kid, man. They, they, these kids all have all their phone numbers in a phone now. Yeah, if that's what I say, they remember the phone... I saw, I think I, my son, when he was little, I said, hey, look, this is what the old phones look like. He was like, wow, where did you put the contacts at? Dude, there was no contacts. You dial a number. You remember, you carried a, you carried a phone book in your hand. He said, wow. <laughs> and especially if it's somewhere like like where, where you're at is out in New York, so the phone book must like was like bigger than a Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Phone books are huge. But also, I also read as well that yourself and J.P. Uh, Edmund actually wrote, recorded, and mixed the single Gordy's Groove in about 12 hours, man. I have to ask you, how yeah. did you do such an amazing track in 12 hours? And of course, how does it feel to know that a song that you made in half a day is, is, one, of, is one of the most famous songs that you ever did? Like they say, it's always the fluke that wins. See, originally, Gordy Groove was almost like a revenge song in a way. Because when we were doing uh, The Beat of the Street, which was the main song, with the choice and fees. Right before that, in 84, you remember um, Grandmaster D when he was rapping on Funky Beat with Houdini. So I said, yo, I want to do the same thing he did. Let, let me do a little eight balls in a little song. Oh, you can't rap, man. You're not getting on no record, man. You make the music, that's it. I said, okay, cool, no problem. I made that song the day we were supposed to go to the mastering lab. So I threw that song together the night before, and I was so into music, every step of a record, I'm there. I'm there for the recording, the mixing, the mastering. All the way down. So I go up to the master lab with her powers. And um, so Tommy Boy sends the masters over. So he's looking at the tracking sheet and he's going, okay, you got B to the street, uh, vocal on side A, and instrument on side B. So I got the tape under my arm. I say, her, check this out. We're going to change it up. Put B to the street, vocal, instrumental on one side. And here, put this on the other side. He said, okay, cool. What's this? Gordy Who? I said, yeah, just throw it on there. Let's see what happens. So he reels it up. The first thing is, you see all the needles banging from the bass. Boom, boom, boom. He said, oh, hell, who recorded this, me? <laughs> he says, too much bass for mastering. I said, yeah, well, just turn it down a little bit. But he still kept the bass strong in it. So now, once the song got up to Tommy Boy, they were like, well, what's this on side B? I said, something I just threw together real quick. Monica Lynch, that's when uh, her, and, her and Tom Silverman, the owners, they listened. The first thing they heard was the Andy Griffith. They said, oh, no, this is the hit. Forget me to the sheet. Put this on the radio. And it got daytime airplay. So that really, that song got got us on the map. And that's crazy, though. Especially when you said at the beginning, you know, they, they said that they, they, they were kind of rude to you, man. You know what? I, I bet you after that, they were thanking you after that. Yeah, the same thing like, uh, like uh, Rockefeller did uh, Kanye West. They didn't really want him to do his own thing. So he went through that little song together. That through the wire, he did that on his own. Made a shot his own video, and he took off. Sometimes you can't let nobody hold you back. You gotta go for it. Exactly, and especially when it's your it's your music, it's your craft. You know what you every like they always say. You yourself are, are your are your worst and and worst critic. You know what I mean? Yeah, Best and worst sure. critic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I gotta ask you this, there, fresh. Like, is there any is there anything like that you want to promote? We have you here live on the air. Like, is there anything I happen to miss? Anything else you want to talk about or address? No, not really. I just want to do the interview because anytime somebody told me some love, I'm going to do the interview. I mean, we never even talked before. But I'm just winging it with you right now. That's the way I am. If somebody wants it, I feel it helps me anyway. Maybe I might want to come to Canada and do something. If I can reach out to you. It might make something happen. So you know. Nah, I, I didn't know what I was. I, I, I don't know nothing off the head right now that I can tell you. Maybe I can put something together and do another one. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty much that's everything. The Jay Z story. I talked about Jay Z and all that. Yeah, it's pretty much it. But 
I do want to say, though, Fresh, I really do appreciate you taking the time of your evening to come on the radio station, man. Like, I've been a fan for a long time. When I reached out, I was like, man, this is one of the best producers out on the East Coast, man. He's probably not going to message me back. But then I got the reply, and I was like, oh, damn, that's what's up. That's Fresh. Oh, no, I'm not one of those people. No, you reach out, and you sound cool, we're going to go for it. You came at me, you, I mean, you right away, you were, you straight up, you had the little picture for the, you know, maybe you had the promotion going, I said, this dude's not playing around. Yeah, I appreciate it, let's do it. I'm ready. Hey, man, I'm sitting here waiting for you to call. I'm sitting here waiting, I wasn't going to move nowhere, at least for the next half an hour. <laughs> when it, I'm going to be honest with you, though, Fresh. When I, when I book an interview, I look at it as you get the flyer ready, you get it rolled up. The quicker you make it, the quicker it gets the green light the more time you have to promote, right? A lot of inter- I, a lot of radio stations, sometimes they sit back and take a couple days, I get right on immediately. Yeah, I see, I see, I like that, yeah. You're definitely professional, man. I dig it. It was a pleasure doing it. I do want to say I appreciate that, and I appreciate the positive feedback, but quickly before we wrap things up, I want to ask you, is, is there anyone you want to give shout-outs to? Or, and of course, where can our listeners find you so they can give you a follow and keep track of everything Fresh Gordon? Oh, they can hit me on, on Facebook. Anybody can hit me on Facebook. I address everybody on Facebook, you know, at Gordon Gordy Groove Picket. But mostly everybody calls me, doesn't them call, call me Fresh Gordon that much. Mostly everybody calls me Gordy Groove because that's the record they know me at. But I'm off to see, hey, Gordy Groove, what's up? All right. Everything is Gordy Groove that. So anybody can reach out to me at uh, Gordon, uh, Gordon Gordy Groove Picket. And it's the same thing on Instagram, too. So anybody hits me there want to show me love, I'm showing love back. And I got to say, Fresh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your uh, evening again and coming on the radio station, man. I hope down the line we can make this happen again. But for now, man, most definitely stay safe out there, out on the East Coast. And we most okay, definitely will talk soon. Same, same to you. Reach out to me anytime I'm here. Most definitely. And the same goes to you as well. Anytime you need anything radio-wise, promotion, feel, feel free to hit me up. My DM and phone line is always available for you. Okay, cool. And I'll, I'll see if I can reach out to a few people I'm still in touch with, like Marky D and Dana Dane. I'll see what they want to do if they want to take a little time out. If they ain't too busy, I'll see if I can get you some, you know, some, some guests on your show. Hey, man, I appreciate that, and most definitely I can't say no. Thank you so much there, Fresh. Okay, my man. Take care. You as well.